Well, after we finished up with the doors for the Super Duty, I started laying out on the workbench the avionics because I want to get those mounted in the panel and start thinking about wiring. As you can see, I now have those instruments in the panel. I have the panel temporarily mounted in the airplane. And right now on the workbench, I am starting to lay out all of the cables and wiring because I need to figure out how to wire all this. These are the boxes that are going to need mounted behind the panel. I have backup batteries for each EFA screen. I have the engine monitor and the Air Inc. 429. I think that's the module that talks to the GPS. This is the comm radio. And I even have things like the starter solenoid and the master solenoid I have to mount on the firewall somewhere. I also have to mount the battery somewhere. And right now I'm not even sure where the battery goes. You guys have seen previously that I do have some components mounted in the airplane. That is the ADS-B with the wiring harness. And this is the transponder with the wiring harness. So obviously with these wires, I'm going to need to drill a hole in the bulkhead, put a grommet in there, and run those wires forward uh, to the power and ground and all the other avionics. I have the intercom mounted in the center console. And this is all the wiring for the headset jacks. And you can see behind the panel, I have the Garmin mounted up top. I have the Dynon avionics. And we have the first official connection. <laughs> and that's just the panel, panel mounted USB port that gets plugged back in to the back of the Dynon. Now I spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out how I'm going to mount the avionics back here. And so far I have two rails mounted. I have one here and you can see one on the other side. Now with these two rails mounted in here, they go from the steel frame up to the firewall. My plan is to add probably two of these angles like this. And then if I have two of these in parallel, I can mount all of the avionics on this little shelf just made out of aluminum angles. Hey guys, can you see me? I'm way over here. Let me show you what I did all day yesterday. And I mean all day. Now before I get started explaining how I'm doing this, just be aware that there are many, many, many ways that you can mount avionics behind your panel. Some people hinge the panel so that the whole panel can rotate down and they'll have a shelf back here with all the avionics. And that's how I originally wanted to do it. But the problem is I couldn't hinge mine because when it rotates, this GPS would, would hit the top of the glare shield. So I have my panel removable, but it's still gonna be very difficult to remove just because I'd have to disconnect everything back here. So I have two ways that I plan on accessing my avionics. Mostly it's from the bottom. And that's why you can see I have the avionics mounted on the bottom of that rack because it's very easy to get under the panel with a screwdriver and unscrew a screw if I need to change something out in there. The other way I can get behind the panel if I really need to is I can just take out the four screws that hold one of these EFIS screens in, pull the EFIS screen out, and there's just a couple plugs that plug into there. So if I did that, I'd have two big openings in the front of the panel, plus being able to get under the panel. So everything I'm doing, I'm designing it so that I can get to it from the bottom. You'll notice here on the backup battery for the EFA screens, I have nut plates. So I don't have to get a wrench under there to undo a nut if I need to change that battery. I just put a screwdriver under there and take out two screws. Over here, I temporarily have a nut on it. But once I remove this, I will install nut plates just like here. So everything will be held in with nut plates. So it'll be really easy to just to, to get under the panel and unscrew a screw and take something out. And the nice thing about the Super Duty is that it's so high off the ground, it's actually very easy to get under the panel. I think you guys will find that if you're building an airplane and it comes down to the point where you're mounting avionics and wiring, most of the time in your shop seems to be just standing there and staring at it, kind of thinking about where you want to mount these individual components and how you want to wire them and where you want to route the wires. 
It's a lot of thought and a lot of work that goes into is something as simple as mounting an avionics box. But I will say, this is probably one of the most fun parts of building an airplane for me. I've always said that doing the panel and painting are the two favorite parts because you really get to start to see it come together. You know, you get that panel in there and get all the switches laid out how you want, and the avionics, it's just really fun. And then of course, when you start painting it, that's, you know, the finishing touches where you get to actually see what your project looks like. So I am definitely having a lot of fun with this. I'm taking my time. I'm trying to design it very smartly so that if I ever need to get back in here, it's going to be easy to do because once this glare shield is on here and the windshield, there's no access from the top at all. So I am at the point now to where I have the avionics tray built and mounted. The holes are all drilled where I need them. I think my next step is to take off this cage and get it powder coated so that I can install this and then I can start installing all of this permanently. I don't want to get too carried away with running wires and stuff like that because all of this does have to come out again just to get this frame powder coated. Here's what everything looks like outside of the plane. I do have the nut plates installed so those four components are mounted. Like I said earlier, if I mount the radio here, then I just need to drill the two or three holes total and rivet this mounting plate to the frame and then the radio mounts on there. If I do wind up mounting the radio in the back, I do have this hub that needs to get mounted somewhere also. So I'm thinking I could put that there. Um, but yeah, I don't really know. I'll figure that out as I progress on the wiring, but this uh, whole assembly is ready to rivet in once I do get the frame back from powder coating. Well, that's it. This is a little bit shorter of a video. Let me know if you guys like these shorter videos better than the standard 15 minute videos. Uh, this is just kind of a quick update on what I'm doing with the avionics. My next step is to remove that frame, take it to the powder coaters. And uh, once I get that back, rivet that in, install the avionics rack, and I can move on to wiring. <laughs>